Folks, welcome back. Before we get to our friend Walter Williams, I, I want to I wanna just uh, get clue you in on something. Uh, yesterday I did an interview with uh, the editor of uh, the New Republic, uh, Isaac uh, Chotner, and uh, we debated reparations because he wrote a piece on someone who wrote a piece on reparations, and we got into it. And I, I, frankly, I, I left with kind of an empty feeling that I, I, I didn't think he stated a good case. I mean, the guy's the editor of New Republic. I thought I'd have a better back and forth, uh, you know, a better argument session with him, if you will, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it wasn't there. I mean, he didn't have, he didn't have uh, cogent answers. That I, I felt that way when I once uh, debated Rachel Maddow. I was filling in for Bill Bennett on his radio show at the Empire State Building, and they hooked CNN hooked me up live on that show with Ma Rachel Maddow, and we went over one of George Bush's State of the Unions. And I'm like, I left saying, that's it? That's the best she had? Well, much to my surprise, um, Isaac Schottner wrote a piece today called I Went on a Conservative Radio Show to Talk About Slavery Reparations. This absurd, hilarious debate ensued. And then he doesn't quote from anything. He writes, I guess, his interpretation. He does post the video at the end. But let me just skip to the end to show you how crazy this whole thing is. He says, the conversation eventually ended when I accused him of being less interested in actual racial problems and more interested in stirring up trouble. So he he makes it sound like he said to me, you don't want to talk about issues and answers, you want to stir up trouble. And I said, oh, I got to go, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Here's how the interview actually ended with his absurd claim that black children don't have access to health care and all my segments are pre-timed, all, they all have hard breaks, I had to go, watch. Can I yeah, we got 20 question? seconds. Go. You got it all. Uh, do you think that your listeners and you spend more time getting angry at things like the proposing reparations or getting angry at things like the fact that, say, African-American children don't have access to health care? Afri African-American children do don't have access to health care. I'd like to debate that with you Not for an hour, and, and we will next time. We don't have time right now, though, but I appreciate you coming on. Uh, thank you very much, Isaac uh, Schottner, uh, New Republic. And that was it. Now, far from him, you know, accusing me of being less interested in the actual racial problems, he claimed black kids don't have access to health care. Not some, not in some places, not occasionally, black kids. So that, that's what I'm up against. Now, he turned down an invitation to come back next week. Uh, we hope he'll come back the week after. But either way, I'm going to tear this summary of the interview that he wrote apart, not with my opinion, but with what was said from the videotape, okay? Now, uh, let me introduce, and we're not gonna do a soundbite first, let me introduce uh, our friend Walter E. Williams, of course, distinguished professor of economics at George Mason University and syndicated columnist. Hello, sir. Hello, good, good afternoon. Oh, good morning's okay. I, I, I yeah. could <laughs> so you see, I mean, I, you know, I did this interview and he's, you know, reparations, and, when, and then he brought up how, uh, you, you get, probably get the drift of where the interview went, but, uh, I, this guy wasn't interested in the truth, and then that summary in, uh, in, on his website today was just uh, mind-boggling. But uh, let, let, let's talk a little bit, and there, there actually is a, a cut I want you to hear. I want you to hear number 46, Nancy Pelosi. Um, basically, uh, um, Walter, blaming the VA problems on George W. Bush without ever mentioning him. Here, here's how she did it. Maybe when we go into war, we should be thinking about its consequences and its ramifications. You would think that would be a given, but maybe it wasn't. And so we go into a war in Iraq, uh, go into Afghanistan, leave Afghanistan for Iraq with unfinished business in Afghanistan. Ten years later, we have all of these additional veterans. In the past five years, two million more veterans. That sounds like she's blaming the decision to go to war on the problems we now face. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I didn't hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. She basically okay. said, right. you know, you got to think before you act. We went into two wars. Now, 10 years later, we uh, have all these millions of veterans coming back. And basically, yeah. you know, that. So it's Bush's fault. I'm, I'm, well, I'm gl I'm, well, I'm surprised she didn't blame it on Reagan. <laughs> yeah. Because he built up our military. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, this is, the, and, and here's the scary part. I mean, it's, 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 it's disgusting uh, to think of what veterans are going through. And veterans should have a card, by the way, where they could go to any doctor anywhere. But uh, that aside is a solution. This is what's going to happen to all of us. If she's complaining that the system has suddenly got millions of more people, and that's why, well, what do you expect? People are going to die waiting. Well, <laughs> when, when we all lose our health insurance or when they let all the illegals in to the system, 
Either way, that's what's going to happen to the regular system. Well, that, that's that's a strong possibility. Uh, and, and and matter of fact, uh, uh, in 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 every country that has a nationalized or socialized medical system, or just about every country that I'm aware of, uh, they they have huge waiting list, uh, and and sometimes it's killing people because in in Great Britain, uh, very there's a study a couple of years ago, and it showed that people uh, present with uh, with colon cancer at at the time of diagnosis, uh, they uh, they're curable, but by the time they're they're referred to a uh, by the time they have to wait to be referred to a specialist, it, the, the disease has progressed and is not and is no longer curable. And uh, we're and, and telling a, a elderly patients, uh, well, gee, you can't have dialysis. I mean, you're you're, you're too old. And and uh, a matter of fact, um, in, for Canada, Canada has a socialized medical system, and it turns out that that Cleveland, Ohio, is the hip replacement center for Canadians. Yeah, they uh, come because, down. Yep. Be, yeah, because they don't want to wait 40 weeks for yeah. a hip replacement. I'm so and glad so, you brought up Canada because that's another perfect example. Absolutely, both Britain and Canada, people uh, people die waiting and or don't get the treatment because they're too old. Yeah, right. It, and it's just it's just like the uh, it, or it's very similar to the VA, and and we could encounter uh, you know counter those uh, uh, we can we can encounter some of those problems. How do you feel about the president? I mean, now we know for sure. Uh, Walter, we know for sure that his his transition team was told about this. We know that it was a problem under George W. Bush, not to this extent, though. So that's why we know they were told. There have been claims that they were told. And 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 Megyn Kelly presented a, a bill that was signed into law by the president in May of 2012 regarding these problems in the Senate. I mean, well, the Senate passed it. It was signed into law. Obviously, everybody passed it. And yet he says he found out about this two weeks ago on CNN. <laughs> Well, well, he also found out about the IRS, yes. uh, the IRS scandal uh, on CNN, too. <laughs> the CNN president, I guess. <laughs> All right, let, let's talk about a great piece that you wrote, uh, uh, America's Budding Tyrants. And I'm glad you uh, uh, referred uh, in passing to Obama uh, Unleashes the Left, the piece by Daniel Henninger. We had him on when he wrote that piece. Um, mm -hmm. what, what's going on on these college campuses, uh, or campi, whatever it is, uh, is, is so outrageous. And uh, for a person like Condoleezza Rice, possibly, arguably, the most successful black woman in this country's history. Well, uh, uh, and perhaps the most nation's most accomplished woman, uh, regardless of True, that. true, absolutely yeah. true. But I, I, mean, I guess I'm adding uh, the, the other yeah. minority status, too. Uh, to, 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 to get her to back out, and I love when they report, she backed out. She didn't back out. She, she did the right thing because, you know, she wanted to cause a, a, a mini stir or riot. So, but, uh, but, right, but, and, 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 the, and students and professors were saying, well, they don't want her on campus because, to give the commencement address because uh, uh, war criminals should not be honored. I had the, one of the professors on, one of the leading guys. I said, what's your real beef with her? He said, she lied uh, us into war with knowingly. I said, what did she knowingly lie about? And this guy said, aluminum tubes. I said, excuse me? She, he said, she said aluminum tubes could lead to nuclear weapons, and the scientists on our campus say that's not true. I said, that's, that's your beef? I mean, these people are just uh, beyond, and, and, and unfortunately, Walter, as you well know, and you are a professor, of course, um, this, is, this is getting worse, this problem, not better. Oh, oh yes, and, uh, and, and, and as I began the, uh, the, the column, um, uh, and I, I point out that from, from the Nazis to the Stalinists, uh, tyrants have always supported uh, free speech. Uh, the, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, what's the guy in, uh, in in Berkeley, Mario Salvio, uh, back in 1964? He led the free speech uh, movement. Yep. And and so these uh, tyrants uh, are for free speech until they get power, because free speech is a means to to uh, uh, spreading propaganda and uh, and 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 proselytizing uh, people. And so, uh, but once they get power, they want to eliminate. You know, Hitler. Uh, he and back in the twenties, he he would not. He would be surely against any restrictions on free speech. But when he came to power, he had all kinds of restrictions on peace, free speech. Because once these tyrants come to power, uh, uh, free speech is a liability. Right, it's their enemy. Absolutely, that, it's it's a huge enemy. And as you finish up by saying, Western values of liberty are under ruthless attack by the academic elite on college campuses across America. These people want to replace personal liberty with government control. They want to replace equality with entitlement. Uh, as mu as such, they pose a far greater threat to our way of life than any terrorist organization or rogue nation. And, and this is, I mean, uh, you know, violence aside and the number of people who, God forbid, would get killed in a terrorist attack, 
overall big picture, long term, you're absolutely right. Yeah, right. And 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 I, I point out also in the column some of the things that are that are really uh, incredible at uh, at at Brandeis uh, University. Uh, they uh, the the uh, officials were intimidating to withhold a a uh, a and a speaking engagement. From I and Hersey Ali, writer, yeah, yeah, writer, and and she could, and she said they they said that um, the the students might be uh, the, uh, might be offended by her attacks on radical Islam. She's a, she's a victim of radical Islam. <laughs> My, You're absolutely goodness. right. And and I pointed out in the column, I say I said I take it that Brandeis students and officials would be uh, see criticism of the deadly uh, Islamists. Uh, 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 what is it? <laughs> what is the guy's name? Uh, Bo what, Boko Haram? What? Yeah, Boko Haram. Yeah. The Boko Haram uh, kin kidnapping those uh, those young uh, those young Nigerian girls and and selling them and as and uh, f uh, you know marrying them off to uh, <laughs> to grown men. I'm I'm wondering whether Brandeis University would consider that a yeah. uh, very uh, good being question. insensitive to Muslims. Very good question. Uh, before we go, I want you to weigh in if you can. Uh, uh, Mark Cuban, um, the NBA owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, made a statement, uh, you know, he, uh, which he sticks by, although he apologized to Trayvon Martin's family. Uh, basically, he said, if I'm walking down the street and I see a guy with a hoodie and it's late at night and I'm alone, uh, I cross the street. But if I see on the other side of the street a white guy uh, with, uh, with um, tattoos all over his face and body, I'm crossing back over. Uh, and he, and he, 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 the left went crazy on him because it was insensitive to Trayvon Martin somehow. Uh, and then he apologized, but he's sticking by his remarks. And they're still debating whether or not this is racist. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> some years ago, uh, uh, Jesse Jackson. Yeah, said the same thing. Yeah, he, sa he said the same thing. That Without that the hoodie, he, though, yeah. When he hears footsteps behind him in the uh, walk along the street at night, he is so relieved when they when they're they're white uh, kids instead of black kids absolutely he said that yeah and so so what happens is that blacks uh, commit so much crime in our country that uh, that that people uh, they they guess uh, and uh, that that uh, uh, black people are engaged in crime you know for some of the statistics are staggering uh, over 50 50 percent of the homicide victims in our country are black americans and and something like uh, uh, 96 percent of the perps are also blacks and something like 7,000 blacks are murdered per year more than anybody else in the country so so the, the, the crime is a serious problem in the black community and it's something that's relatively new it was it wasn't the when, in, back in the 40s it wasn't the kind of problem that it is today Walter always great to talk to you I, I look forward to our next chat please have a great Memorial Day weekend sir okay and the same to you thank Steve. you Walter E. Williams uh, check him out Walter E. Williams .com. Uh, and read all of his syndicated uh, work. Of course, the great Walter E. Williams. All right, when we come back, Deborah Burlingame, who is under attack, CARE wants her kicked off the board at the 9 11 Museum and Memorial here in New York. Uh, but thank goodness the museum seems to be sticking by her. She is a great lady. She'll join us exclusively here for two segments. Don't miss it. Coming up next, right here.